This is a quick tip on how to get your text animations that you've made in the 3D viewport to be overlaid on top of your video in the video sequence editor with a scene strip. Frenzy. Quick tip. Hi, Justin here with Blender Frenzy. So here in the video sequence editor, I've imported some demo footage. Hi, welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin. What I want to do is overlay some text over here that I've created in the 3D viewport. And to do this, we're going to use a scene strip. But in order to use a scene strip, we have to have at least two scenes. And so your scenes are up here. Right now I have two scenes. One is edit and one is title. So if I go to the title, you can see everything disappears because I don't have anything in the video sequence editor in this scene. But rather, I can go to my title tab, which is just the 3D layout tab. If you go to general layout, that's what this is, and you can double click here to name this whatever you want. I just named it title, but uh, I don't need a second one, so I'm going to right click and delete that one. So here we have this animation that I created in the 3D viewport, and if I scroll out, you can see my camera is in orthographic mode. If you go to the camera object properties tab, the orthographic scale, if I press zero and I go into that, I just adjust the orthographic scale to zoom in and zoom out. And here's the animation and what it looks like. So I made this animation for the titles of my new VFX course in Blender, which was inspired by 1984's The Terminator title credits. You can check it out at blenderfrenzy.com and purchase the course if you want to support me. I also have a membership. You can sign up to be a pro member in order to see some cool behind the scenes stuff where I go over uh, the geometry nodes for this. So this is the chapter title that I used and it's just based on geometry nodes. I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial, but this is what I've created. So this is whatever you create in the 3D view, whether it's geometry nodes or whether it's just regular text animation or meshes or really anything that you want. Just make sure since we're going to be using this as an overlay to go to your render properties, scroll all the way down to film and then check transparent. And if we go up to our render preview, you can see this is transparent. We can also turn off the overlays. So here's our animation as an overlay on a transparent background. So I'm going to pause here. Then I want to come back to video editing. And remember, nothing is here because we're still in the title scene. And so we can click over here to edit. And here's a pro tip if you don't want to change both of these at the same time. So if I go to title here, nothing is going to be here because I don't have anything in the 3D view for my edit that is going to be in the title. So instead of having to click one and then change it and then click the other one and then change it again, we can actually pin one of these. And so on our title tab, I'm going to pin the title scene. And that way, if I click video editing, it's going to stay at whatever it was. Now, if I change this to title, it's going to stay at title, even if it's not pinned. So just got to make sure that edit is selected. You can also just pin edit here, but I'm not going to pin it because I want the video editing, the rendering and the compositing to all be on edit. And then the only thing I want on the title is the title. So that's the only thing that I have pinned. It just makes it so much easier by clicking here back and forth if I want to make any sort of changes. So going back over to video editing, now I can hover my mouse over the sequencer, press shift A and add in a scene. And then there's only one other scene because you can't add the current scene to itself. So we got the title, we want to add that in here. I'm going to press G and then move this up. But before I do anything with it, I want to make sure we have the right settings. What you see over here on my screen is the same thing if you hover over down here, press N, you can see this is all the same thing. Make sure you're on your strip tab, which is here. And then all of these things are your settings. I've just created an area up here for having them with a little bit more ease of access. So on your strip tab, you can change the scene here. Of course, we can't because we only have one of them. But you can also change the camera. We have either camera or sequencer. So if your other scene is pulling something from the sequencer instead of the 3D view, then you would use that. But we don't. We have it from a camera in the 3D view. And then here you can choose the camera, which right now is the only one, which in this case, because I've been working with several different cameras, it's camera.003. You can select that, but if it's the only one, that's the one it's gonna choose from. You can also bring in the volume, and I think this has to do with the sequencer because you don't really have any volume in the 3D layout. And here we can show annotations or transparency if we have them. So everything is fine. I just want to make sure two things at least are set up here that we do have transparent on. Remember, we want this to be an overlay. If that is not on, you're going to have something that looks like this. So you just have the regular gray background that we have in our title. And it's not quite gray. I don't know why, but you can see that this is linked. So now this is unchecked for transparent. But if we check this for transparent, 
and then we come back over here now this is checked again and the reason we're not seeing it is we need to refresh which in blender 4 is Control e to refresh while hovering your mouse over here if you're still not seeing it make sure that this says alpha over if this says anything like replace or cross you're going to see something that looks like that. So make sure this is alpha over. And now we have this properly overlaid. And now we can position it. So I'm gonna actually position it more to the beginning here. Then I can hover over the preview, press G to grab, move this over here, S to scale, and align it how I want. Turn the overlays off. Perfect, well, almost perfect. So you might've noticed that our coloring is wrong. If we come back over to our title scene, you can see that the text starts out white, and then as we play through our animation, we have the animating of the square, and then we have green text. So towards the end of the frame range here, we'll be towards the end of the scene strip here, and this should be green. So it should be white and then green. This is one of the downsides of using the scene strip is that it will not use the final rendered version, at least not that I'm aware of. So if anybody knows there's an option that we can use the final rendered version in the preview, please let me know because I don't know how to do it. But this is still all there. I've made a rendering tab. Here's my preview. This is my final render result. So if I press F12 to render a single image, you can see that this actually is the correct color. And if I go over here, this should be white. And it is. So with the render result, it's fine, but the preview, it doesn't show the rendered view. So there you go. That's how you can use title animations from a 3D scene as an overlay in the VSC using a scene strip. If you wanna see more of this, you can come to my website, blenderfrenzy.com. I've got a new VFX course that you can check out, or you can become a Frenzy, sign up. Sign up to Frenzy Pro. You can see a whole bunch of extra content with downloads. Uh, I've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff here. We got using scene strips as overlays. I go into depth of how I did this for my course, uh, both for the lower thirds and for the titles. I showed a lot of different behind the scenes making of, um, just a lot of extra stuff. And again, with the pro, you get the downloads as well. If you wanna see what the course is about, you can click get started and you can watch the teaser trailer. But in a nutshell, the course teaches you basic principles of VFX to make yourself look like the Terminator by using real footage combined with CG footage. I go into the filming and the head tracking and creating negative space and then how to paint wounds onto whatever part of the face that you want, making it look like the Terminator skull is beneath your skull. You get the full Terminator skull that I've built from scratch as a download in the course. I go over how to recreate the basic shapes of the rough environment that you shot in without 3D scanning, all done in Blender. This part of the course is coming soon, but everything else is finished. While it's still under construction, you get an early access sale at 45 instead of 75. So click get early access if you want that today and help support me because I'm trying to get into Blender full time and I would really appreciate any support that you could give. So I hope this was helpful and you'll see me in the next one.